I think the killing of Osama bin Laden, the coming of the Arab awakening, the recognition in the region that Osama bin Laden and al-Qaeda were killing mostly Muslims, um, means that uh, al-Qaeda has been uh, dramatically weakened from what it's been in the past. Uh, and that is a positive development for us, and it's a positive development in the region. We tried counterinsurgency, nation building, whatever you want to call it. We found out two things. One, we're not very good at it. And number two, Americans don't have the patience to do this because it's a long-term proposition. And so I think what you're going to see in the future is the way we dealt with ca capturing bin Laden using special forces, the way we're dealing with remnants of al-Qaeda on the Pakistan-Afghanistan border with drones and special forces, the way we're dealing with al-Qaeda on the Arabian Peninsula in, uh, in Yemen. It'll be seen as an overreaction to legitimate threats. There were important threats both in Iraq and in Afghanistan and vis-a-vis -vis terrorism. Uh, they weren't as linked and cohesive as the Bush administration portrayed them as being. They weren't as urgent as they were portrayed, except for jihadist terrorism. And uh, they didn't require the massive investment in time, effort, military uh, expenditures and so forth that were ultimately deployed to them. So now that we're winding all that down, uh, the lasting problems of American foreign policy, not just in the region, but in the globe beyond, uh, are going to reassert themselves. I worry about all these people coming back who have been in battle for a better part of a decade. And they come back and the adrenaline level is still high and they have a society that doesn't, isn't really interested in the wars, that there's battle fatigue on the home front and how we deal with, with those people who have sacrificed so much, how you integrate them back into society.